New at 11, a St. Petersburg woman getting a humble apology from her sister after mistakenly accusing her of shocking a child with a stun gun. Saturday, Karen Blaswell called police on her sister, Ramona, accusing her of zapping her three-year-old son while the family was spending Thanksgiving weekend together. She heard her son scream and rushed in to find her sister holding the stun gun. Looked like a lipstick case. Well, at first, Karen believed her child had been shocked, but later she says she realized he was just scared. And now that the kids have changed their story totally around, it's just ludicrous. I don't hold grudges. I don't have that kind of heart to hold grudges, you know what I'm saying? That ain't me. Ramona says she was just playing around with a stun gun and never hurt anyone. Well, paramedics were called into a cruise ship after a man began choking. A Miami-Dade fire rescue helicopter was sent in about five miles off the coast of Miami. A fire rescue medical tech was lowered on a cable to the ship's deck. The patient and a member of the flight crew were hauled back into the helicopter. That patient was taken to Jackson Memorial Hospital. You have two days left to speak your mind about all aboard Florida. The Federal Railroad Administration received over 1,200 comments from residents at its meetings. A lot of people voiced their concern about the report that showed how the railroad would affect certain neighborhoods. If there are a large number of complaints about a specific area, the impact report will have to be reevaluated. New and interesting findings about seniors and driving tonight. According to a AAA study, older drivers actually support tougher driving laws even for themselves. They're in favor of bans on wireless devices and ignition locks for first-time DUI offenders. An overwhelming majority, nearly 80% of drivers over the age of 75, favor medical screenings for drivers age 75 and older. They also say before you criticize an older driver, think about this. 90% of older drivers had no crashes in the last two years and no moving violations. And 65% report never using a cell phone while driving. NASA preparing for its test flight of the new Orion spacecraft is a ship that could one day carry astronauts to the moon, to an asteroid, even to Mars. NASA is making sure the unmanned spacecraft can handle a 20,000 mile per hour re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. It'll blast off from Cape Canaveral at 7.05 a.m. on Thursday. A consumer alert tonight. Be mindful of toys that could pose hazards to small children. The Trouble in Toyland report reveals toys with high levels of toxic substances, including lead and chromium, which are still on store shelves. Despite a ban on small parts for children under the age of three, toys for that age group are still available in stores and online. Uh, there was no light when I um, saw him. There was beams and insulation inside, and then we saw him. We're following a developing story, a story we first told you about last night on the missing 13-year-old boy kept prisoner behind a secret wall. The Clayton County, Georgia Police Department now speaking out about the incident like you just heard there. The boy Gregory Jean Jr. was found by police officers after receiving a tip from the child's mother. He had been missing for nearly four years. A judge denied bond for the boy's father and stepmother who were reportedly hiding the youngster. Well, Boyd Beach police demonstrate community involvement when they receive a 911 hang up call from a little girl. Police called that number back. That's when a child said that she was sad because her family wouldn't have a Christmas tree this year. So officers delivered some genuine holiday cheer. Hello. Hey, how, you doing? how are you, my man? All right. How are you, guys? Good light? Uh, yeah. Thank you. you like that? The officers, as you can see, surprised that family with a Christmas tree of stand, lights, and ornaments. Like that, huh? Well, several Boca Raton firefighters showing the, their true spirit of the holiday season by coming to the aid of an injured colleague. Today, two dozen firefighters and police officers showed up at Captain Mike McBrien's home and put up the decorations. In the early morning hours of Thanksgiving Day, McBrien was seriously hurt after he passed out in the fire station and then a fire truck ran over his leg. From the hospital, McBrien said at the time he thought the accident may have been a game changer for him and his family. While it was on my leg, I was thinking, get it off, get it off, but it, it, I thought the damage was already done. You know, but, uh, you know, there's still responsibilities and things that we have to take care of. I was thinking of that stuff, but that thought kept recurring that I'm probably never going to use my leg. 
Doctors were able to save McBrien's leg, and he should be released from the hospital in the next few days. Tomorrow morning, Palm Beach County commissioners will weigh in on the Kratom controversy. Staff will advise commissioners not to regulate the drug, but instead adopt a first-of-its-kind Kratom education program. And tonight, another first. Two years after the Contact 5 investigators first introduced you to the legal herb, Katie Legrone shows you a side of the Kratom craze that's never been seen by the public. We can't tell you where we are or show you the route we took to get here, but about 150 miles away from Palm Beach County in a nondescript office building. This is our uh, shipping room where we ship all of our products out of. Jim Morissette My office. has agreed to show us inside his business. Sanita sanitized room. A business the FDA, uh, DEA, uh, and most police across and, the country. Uh, this is our labeling and uh, bottling facility. Are now watching. And have you ever opened your doors to your operation? No, no. Why not? There's a big fear in this industry, a huge fear in this industry. Morissette is an online Kratom distributor, one of a growing number who import, repackage, and sell the controversial powdered plant for profit. You think you're doing anything morally, ethically wrong? No, as a matter of fact, on the contrary, I, I think I'm helping an awful lot of people. The natural herb commonly used in teas is credited for helping to curb drug addiction. This is a solution. It's not, pro it's not part of the problem. And widely criticized by others for fueling it. A few states have banned Kratom, while local decision makers here are now planting the seeds to regulate it. I deal with people every day with addiction problems, pain problems, um, and, and, and some states where it's, where it's been made illegal. People are crushed. The Contact 5 investigators recently had Kratom purchases tested. The results expose how plant potency levels can range from batch to batch, product to product, or drink to drink. I'm not saying that there aren't companies out there that are doing the wrong thing, but I'm telling you that the people that are of influence are doing the right thing. For an industry masked in mystery, Morissette's Kratom Kingdom is surprisingly simple. In just 1,200 square feet of office space, powdered kratom arrives in kilo bags directly from Indonesia. It's then handled by two glove-toting employees who spend hours meticulously weighing and measuring before pouring enough of the greens to fill 30-gram bottles of powder or capsules. And this is our labeling room uh, where we uh, put the tamper seals on and um, label the products. No product leaves here without a protective seal and a warning. It's a must-have for a business constantly on the defense. It's very, very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. You fight it on every front. A former high-rise project manager who lost millions when the real estate market crashed, Morissette is now banking on Kratom to save him. That is, if he can save it first. But the uh, frustration that we have with legislation and, and, uh, and governmental bodies uh, regulating we just need to be left alone to do business in the United States. Morissette supports age restrictions on Kratom sales. His own website makes buyers agree that they are at least 18 years old. Morissette plans to be in the audience tomorrow when Palm Beach County commissioners begin to debate if Kratom should be regulated here. Katie Legrone, WPTV News Channel 5. Now, Storm Team 5 with South Florida's most accurate weather forecast. It's a windy night out there. The winds continue and they're picking up uh, 25, 30 mile an hour winds and it's blustery up and down the coastline tonight. It, they kind of picked up this afternoon and they're going to stay high through Tuesday and Wednesday. That's an issue for rip currents along area beaches and of course those palm fronds too. Here's a look at what's going on tonight on the radar, uh, bringing in some showers along the coastline. Heaviest rain falls back around the west coast uh, through Tampa, all the way down through Fort Myers, but we have our own rain here and a quick moving shower possible tonight. You can see pretty good cell just off the Treasure Coast now. There it is right there. Palm Beach County getting a little bit of a break and temperatures are still in the mid 70s, but about 10 to 15 degrees cooler back around Okeechobee, 61 now. Impressive hour by hour forecast into the morning. Umbrella needed. Hold on to it. It's going to be windy. Showers mixed in with a little bit of sunshine. Not as much sun as we saw today, though. We warm up to about 80 degrees by the afternoon. Uh, as the afternoon wears on, our temperatures start to drop a little, but it's still breezy to windy, and there's still showers and areas of rain through four and five. So you're going to get some for the drive to work and the drive home tomorrow night. And uh, it's going to be pretty mild for this time of year. 
7980 is about typical for our daytime highs. Rainfall chances stay high the next two days, 30 to 40 percent on Tuesday and Wednesday, and we drop a little bit for the rest of the week, and we'll see a little more sunshine for the second half of this week, too. Here's the Vipercast model. There's six in the morning. You see the showers popping up, and there is a rain as we get in through the day. Everything continues to work in along the coastline with that wind into Wednesday. Still some more showers in the morning, and they'll continue Wednesday in the, the afternoon, too. Uh, yesterday was the last day of hurricane season, and this turned out to be a slow season. Uh, eight name storms, six hurricanes and two intense hurricanes, but it's been nine years now since Hurricane Wilma. The only close call was Arthur, the first storm of the season. It formed just north of the Bahamas, and it came close for a while, but wasn't a threat here. Our wave heights tomorrow, five to six feet. It's choppy. Small craft advisory continues four to six along the coastline. Watch out for rip currents. There'll be an issue tomorrow. It'll be an issue on Wednesday. Swim at a guarded beach. Uh, best bet, though, is just to stay on the uh, shore because those rip currents will be uh, a problem for a couple of days. There are some pretty big waves popping up there. 80 tomorrow, sh uh, scattered showers, still windy. Uh, during the day and the seven day forecast has more clouds and sunshine on Wednesday, Thursday and into the rest of the week and into the weekend looking a little bit better. There'll still be isolated showers, but more in the way of sunshine too. All right, Steve, thank you. Coming up in sports, a great opportunity for the Dolphins tonight against the lowly Jets. Joe Gervin is in next to show us if Miami took advantage.